So Survivor Series 1997 and the Montreal screw job. This is a subject that has been done to death here on YouTube and I really didn't want to cover it from start to end because everyone has already done it. Everyone has an opinion and no one ever agrees on who was right or who was wrong. Vince McMahon's infamous Brett screwed Brett interview from the November 17th 1997 episode of Raw though. This is something that kind of gets glossed over when people talk about the incident so I felt I could cover this in depth so you you guys don't have to listen to the same old story once again. Everyone knows that Vince McMahon went public with his feelings towards Brett on WWF television during this interview, but people may have missed some of the finer details. So today, let's take a look at how Vince McMahon tried to portray himself and Bret Hart immediately after the Montreal incident. Again, I know you guys know the story, but we need to give context here. Vince McMahon and Shawn Michaels screwed Bret Hart at the 1997 Survivor Series on the 9th of November 97. Bret thought the match would end in a disqualification, but when Shawn put Bret in the sharpshooter, Vince McMahon ordered the timekeeper to ring the bell, and Shawn Michaels became WWF Champion. Bret Hart, who had already signed a deal with the opposing WCW, spat on Vince's face. He broke TV monitors and backstage, he punched Vince McMahon in the face before leaving the WWF. To get it out of the way, Bret had reasonable creative control during his final 30 days within WWF and he didn't want to lose the championship to Shawn Michaels. Unable to come up with a compromise, Vince and Bret agreed on a disqualification finish at the pay-per-view and Bret would drop the WWF title at a later date, but not in Canada and not to Shawn Michaels. Vince and others on the creative team felt that Bret was being unreal reasonable, and even though Brett believed the Survivor Series match would end in a disqualification, Vince McMahon ordered for the bell to be rung and Shawn Michaels left with the title. Obviously, people wanted answers. Brett had been a cornerstone of the WWF during the 90s, and he had a huge devoted fan base that stretched across the world. When Survivor Series 1997 came to an end, viewers had no idea what had just happened. It didn't take long for Bret Hart to go public in regards to his match with Michaels, and it didn't take long for the the wrestling media to begin reporting the finer details. So in a clear showing of damage control, Vince McMahon recorded an interview with Jim Ross that would air on WWF Raw one week later. The ultimate purpose of this interview, besides damage control, was to paint Vince McMahon as the good guy and to pretty much make Bret Hart look as bad as possible. And whether you think Vince was right or wrong, or whether you think Bret done the right thing or the wrong thing, it's irrelevant. This interview ended up turning the fans against Vince McMahon. What you'll hopefully learn by the end of this video is that Vince McMahon was trying to manipulate the situation and manipulate fans, but what Vince didn't understand was how loyal fans were to Bret Hart back in 97. Vince McMahon underestimated how smartened up fans were to what happened in Montreal, and when McMahon gave his side of the story on WWF Raw, instead of painting him as the good guy in all of this, McMahon ultimately made himself one of the biggest heels in wrestling. This interview pretty much gave birth to the villainous Mr. McMahon character within wrestling, as fans would loudly boo Vince McMahon in arenas across America after the interview aired on WWF television. So I think the best thing to do here is to go over the interview piece by piece and dissect what's being said here. There's some truths, there's some half-truths, and there's some flat out lies here from the owner of the company, and you'll easily be able to tell why fans felt so insulted after this aired on TV. The interview was split into two parts, and it was billed on Raw as Why Brett Why? The Untold Story. And the interview features Vince McMahon and Jim Ross sitting at a table with a giant picture of the hitman in the background. The first question Jim Ross asks is the one that gets replayed all the time on WWE documentaries and whatnot. Jim asks Vince if he screwed Bret Hart at the Survivor Series, cutting right to the chase here. Vince McMahon says... Some would say I screwed Bret Hart. Bret Hart would definitely tell you I screwed him. I look at it from a different standpoint. I look at it from the standpoint of... The referee didn't screw Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels certainly did not screw Bret Hart, nor did Vince McMahon screw Bret Hart. I truly believe that Bret Hart screwed Bret Hart. He can look in the mirror and know that. 
So yeah, there you go, the first lies of the interview. Shawn Michaels was very much in on the whole thing, and Earl Hebner also knew what was going to happen. While it was Vince McMahon that gave the go-ahead, Shawn, Earl and Vince knew what was going to happen as the bell rung to start the match. By saying that Bret Hart screwed Bret Hart, Vince was refusing to take responsibility, and really, Vince was saying that this was all Bret's fault. Jim Ross then says that right now there's probably a collective groan in some part parts of the country because Vince McMahon won't take responsibility for Montreal and Ross wants to know what Vince means when he says Bret Hart screwed Bret Hart. Vince carries on by saying I will certainly take responsibility for any decision I ever made. I never had a problem doing that. Not all of my decisions are accurate, they're not. But when I make a bad decision, I'm not above saying that I'm sorry and trying to do the best about it that I can. Hopefully the batting average is pretty good. I make more good decisions than I do bad decisions. Okay, so we need to stop there and think about modern wrestling for a little moment. I'm fairly confident that Vince would never come out on TV today and say he makes more good decisions than bad decisions. In 1997 also, WCW was completely destroying the WWF in the television ratings, so it's a bold claim to make here. By the way, take nothing away from Vince, we don't need to go into details about how he pretty much changed the wrestling business and how successful the WWF truly was. Was. But still, maybe it wasn't a great idea to blow your own trumpet when discussing the unceremonious exit of one of your top superstars. Moving on, Vince then says... As far as screwing Bret Hart is concerned, there's a time-honored tradition in the wrestling business that when someone is leaving that they show the right amount of respect to the superstars, in this case to the people that made you that superstar. I mean, you show the proper respect to the organization that helped you become who you are today. It's a time-honored tradition and Bret Hart didn't want to honor that tradition. To be fair, Vince has a good enough argument here. What McMahon was referring to was how wrestlers would lose on their way out the door. Traditionally, a wrestler would lose their final matches in order to elevate the stars remaining in the company. Brett said that he told Sean previously that he had no problem losing to him, and Sean said that while he appreciated the sentiment, HBK wouldn't do the same for Brett. When Sean said this, Brett decided he wouldn't do any future jobs for the Heartbreak Kid. Along with this, Brett said he wasn't happy losing the championship in Canada. So this leads to Brett not honouring tradition. Brett was not happy to lose on his way out of the company, at least to Shawn Michaels at the Survivor Series. It's been reported that the Hitman would have been happy to drop the title to someone else. But on the flip side, it's also been reported that Brett wanted to forfeit the title after giving an in-ring interview. That's the problem with this whole Montreal incident. The story has been told so many times by so many people that you simply don't know who to believe. Continuing on, Vince said... That's something I would have never expected from Brett because he's known somewhat as a traditionalist in this business. It would have never crossed my mind that Brett wouldn't want to show the right amount of respect to the superstars that helped make him and the organization that helped make him what he is today. I know that was Brett's decision. Brett screwed Brett. This might annoy some people, but Shawn Michaels absolutely helped in making Bret Hart, particularly in 1992 and 1993. Shawn jobbed to Bret constantly on the house shows night after night, and Shawn had also lost to Bret previously when the cameras were rolling. Of course, Bret also lost to Shawn at WrestleMania 12, but Shawn done nothing but lose to Bret while Bret was on his rise to the top in the WWF. It's actually quite astonishing when you see how many times Shawn lost to the Hitman. Jim Ross then wants to know how Brett got out of his 20 year WWF contract and how he was allowed to sign a deal with World Championship Wrestling. Vince said, it was a joint decision from both Brett and me. And ultimately, what happened was, the two of us got together and orchestrated the opportunity for Ted Turner's wrestling organization to quote, steal Brett. I felt that, for business reasons, that Brett Hart and the salary we were paying him was not justified. And Brett felt that for creative reasons and the fact that he had become sort of second banana in his own mind to Shawn Michaels, who had quote, stolen his spot. So, for financial reasons on my part and for creative of reasons on Bret Hart's part, the two of us got together and decided, let's do the very best we can 
for you, Brett. So the two of us orchestrated Bret Hart receiving a three-year deal in which he was paid $3 million a year, which I believe is the richest deal in all of professional wrestling, and that's for working 125 days a year. In a nutshell, Vince says that Brett wasn't happy with not being the WWF's top guy, and so both he and Vince worked together to get him a good deal with WCW. The problem here is that Bret Hart said on his Wrestling With Shadows documentary that he didn't want to leave the WWF, he wanted to stay, and you can just tell he didn't want to go to WCW. The reality of the situation was that Vince McMahon could no longer afford Bret's contract. Vince McMahon also did not help Bret get $3 million a year from Ted Turner. That deal was previously offered to Bret in 1996, and Bret only had to contact WCW to see if that same offer was still available, which it was. So there's a lot of half-truths here. Still, this doesn't clear Bret Hart. If the hitman truly wanted to stay, then I'm sure it would have been possible with a pay cut. Millions of dollars can certainly sway one's opinion. There's no doubt in my mind that Bret wanted to stay in the WWF. It's where he made his legacy after all, but at the same time, the money being offered from WCW was simply too much to turn down. In regards to Bret's deal being the the richest deal in all of wrestling, this is also false when you consider the clauses and incentives that Hulk Hogan had in his deal. Brett said in his book that during his initial meetings with Eric Bischoff, Brett requested that he got the same deal as Hulk Hogan plus one dollar, and Eric Bischoff refused. To sum it up, Hulk Hogan squeezed way more money out of WCW than Brett did. Anyway, Vince then says, I felt from a personal standpoint that if Brett wasn't a great investment any longer for the WWF, although I didn't really want him to go but nonetheless, that the least I could do for Brett was to help him help himself. And I told Brett, Brett, if you in fact get this deal from Turner, then I'm going to be the first person personally to congratulate you. And I was. From a business standpoint, I didn't really want to lose Brett. He wasn't paying off from a financial standpoint, but I didn't really want to lose Brett. So yeah, it doesn't add up at all when we understand that the Hitman's WCW deal was offered to Brett long before the 1997 Survivor Series. Vince also buries Brett a little here when he says that Brett wasn't paying off from a financial standpoint, and maybe he had a point in terms of licensing and merchandise. We don't know how Vince truly determines a wrestler's worth in terms of finances, so we really can't argue Vince's point here. In the eyes of many wrestling fans though, a 1997 Bret Hart was absolutely priceless. When asked about Bret's actions after the final bell, Vince said, I was disappointed when Brett hit me, very disappointed. I sustained a concussion as a result of it with vision problems to this day. I'll get over it. I didn't think it was the right thing to do. Brett seems to be crowing about that. He feels proud of striking me. And it wasn't a question of a confrontation because even at 52 years old, I dare say that perhaps things would have been a little different if there was a confrontation. I allowed Brett to strike me. I had hoped he wouldn't. I had hoped we could sit down and try and work things out as gentlemen. That's what I had really hoped for, but that's not what happened. It's been confirmed that Vince did go into Brett's locker room and he did give Brett a free shot, so not a lot we can say here. Vision problems and a concussion sound a little far-fetched, but again, this is something we really can't argue because we just don't know. Vince says here though that if he fought back, he could have maybe taken on the hitman and things would have turned out differently, but I'm not so sure about that. Brett was in phenomenal shape during this time period, but let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think Vince could have knocked out Brett Hart in 1997 if Vince fought back? After answering this question, Vince says he's considered pursuing legal remedies for the situation, but that all depends on Brett. Ross then asks Vince about how the Survivor Series should have ended. What should have been the final true chapter of Brett's career? Vince says, 
I would have hoped that Brett's story would be a dramatic one. I would hope that Brett's story would be one that would give him dignity, that would give him the poise to state that I was maybe the greatest WWF superstar ever in terms of his departure. And one way to be able to give back to the company, being able to give back to those individuals, those superstars who helped you achieve the level of success that you have when you know you are leaving in a time-honored tradition after the most grueling match that Brett ever had in his life, Brett was pinned. But in that small moment of defeat, Brett would have stood straight up and shown the whole world what a true champion, both as a human being and as a wrestling persona that he is. And if I had been Brett, if I were writing the story, I can see Brett after a 1-2-3 simply saying, okay, to his opponent, you got the best of me, I want to congratulate you, I want to stick my hand out and congratulate you, and furthermore, I want everyone in the whole locker room to watch my match, so that I can show for those who follow in my footsteps, the way this is to be done. To show every individual, every secretary, everyone in Titan Sports, the WWF, those who count on me to do the right thing, that I was there, that I was that superstar, maybe the greatest ever. And I went out the way a true champion would go out. Vince says here that Brett should have taken a pinfall loss on his way out and this loss would have earned him the respect from not only his peers but every single individual who works for the WWF including the office secretaries. I'm sure Susie working overtime in the post room couldn't give two shits about the Survivor Series 1997 main event. It's a guilt trip from Vince McMahon but the takeaway here and it's quite a big one is that in a perfect world Brett would have lost his match to Shawn Michaels at the Survivor Survivor Series via pinfall, so it likely would have been the sweet chin music that ended Brett's WWF career. And afterwards, it sounds like Vince wanted Brett to wave goodbye to show what a true champion he truly was. Ross's next question and Vince's answer is another one that gets replayed time and time again. When asked to look at Brett as a former friend and a human being, Vince gets questioned about showing a certain degree of sympathy for Brett after what happened in Montreal. Vince snaps back by saying, Sympathy? I have no sympathy for Brett whatsoever. None. I have no sympathy for someone who is supposed to be a wrestling traditionalist, not doing the right thing for the business that made him, not doing the right thing for the fans and the performers and the organization that helped make him what he is today. Brett made a very, very selfish decision. Brett's going to have to live with that for the rest of his life. Brett screwed Brett. I have no sympathy whatsoever for Brett. Take from that what you will. The thing is, in modern times, people have made up their own mind about Montreal. People's opinions vary, but everyone has an opinion. Who was right, who was wrong, what should have happened, all that stuff. But saying that Brett made a selfish decision when Vince was the guy who screwed him on TV is kind of wrong in my opinion. I know Vince is saying Brett is selfish here because he refused to do the job to Michaels, but Vince was just as bad for how the whole thing was handled in the end. One thing that Vince says here though is absolutely true that Brett would have to live with the Montreal incident for the rest of his life. Brett really couldn't let go of what happened in Montreal and in certain respects the screw job kind of overshadowed much of Brett's legacy. Anyway this kind of thing always starts debate so let's move on. The second part of the interview kicks off with Jim Ross asking if Vince would ever bring Brett Hart back even after Brett spat in his face and punched him. Could Vince ever rehire the hitman? Vince said this is a strange business, and yes, I would. We would have to have a real frank understanding. I would want to hear Brad say, Vince, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be selfish and I just kind of lost it out there for a while. And I have no problem saying, Brad, geez, I'm sorry, I had to do what I had to do as well. Would I welcome him back? I would also tell Brett no more free shots. I would want that strictly from a man's standpoint. I'd want him to know that. And in the future, if we're going to have problems along these lines, yeah, we're going to have them, but no more free shots. Yeah, if Brett could tear up his contract with the other guys right now in return, I would welcome him back under those conditions. 
So while Vince says that if both he and Brett apologize to each other that he'd welcome him back, Vince also says that there would be no more free shots, which we assume means no more punching Vinnie Mac in the face. Vince saying that he would welcome Brett back if he tore up the WCW contract is just absolute nonsense and it's also quite hypocritical. Brett already said he wanted to stay and Vince previously said he couldn't keep Brett due to financial reasons, so why he thought Brett would rip up his WCW contract to come back to the WWF is anyone's guess. Vince couldn't afford what he previously promised Brett and Brett was going to get paid the most money he'd ever make in his life, so of course he wasn't going to come back and say sorry. Speaking of money, Jim Ross then asks if Brett was simply motivated by the cash being offered by WCW. Vince says, there were signs in the arena following Survivor Series, Brett sold out. Brett seems to be sensitive to that subject, that he doesn't want to be known as someone who sold out. I'm proud of the fact that I helped Brett sell out, and that's what Brett did, he sold out. And it's not a big deal because I helped him do it. So do I think that Brett left for the money? I think that when you're making $3 million a year and you're only working 125 days of the year, I think Brett sold out and I don't blame him for selling out. I helped him sell out and I suggest that there will be a long line outside the next locker room with wrestlers begging me, Vince help me sell out. So do I think he sold out? Yeah. And every time Brett says, no, I didn't do it for the money, Brett loses credibility. This is a case of picking a side really. As stated already, Brett may have wanted to stay in the WWF but he also wanted the money. Brett wouldn't take a pay cut so he went to WCW to earn as much as possible. It's as simple as that. At the same time, it's hard to blame Brett for taking the WCW offer because Vince had told Brett that the WWF could no longer afford him. Brett's deal with the WWF was unprecedented at the time. It was a 20 year deal that would ensure Brett had a job within the company even after he was finished up inside the ring. So Brett thought, naturally, that he was set up for life. When Vince said he couldn't honour this contract after a year or so, Brett's financial plans for the future were thrown out the window and we have no idea what kind of debts or expenses Bret Hart had at the time. Along comes WCW offering ridiculous money for less dates, the hitman didn't have to commit 20 years and Brett would get paid extremely well for less work. So of course Brett would sell out, he really didn't have any other choice. Well, he could have worked for Vince for less money I'm sure, but in the end, when Brett signed a deal with the WWF in 19 to spend 20 years with the company and that same $3 million per year contract was offered to Brett back then from WCW, Brett still chose the World Wrestling Federation. So calling Brett a sellout in this kind of derogatory manner is kind of low in my opinion. It was Brett who showed loyalty in 1996 and it was Vince who ultimately broke the original contract. Yes, the WWF had fell on hard times, but then again, Vince McMahon shouldn't have offered contracts that he couldn't guarantee. On the subject of how this has all affected Vince both personally and professionally, McMahon said, From the business side, the WWF will go on beyond Bret Hart. From the personal side, it definitely has affected me. You can't end a 14 year relationship without having feelings. I regret that I was forced into making the decision I made. I regret that Brett didn't do the right thing for the business and for himself because it wouldn't have cost him $1 less in his deal with Turner. I regret that his fans, if there is such a thing separate from WWF fans, are hurt in a way by any of this. I regret that his family has to endure this tirade that Brett seems to be on. I regret that a member of my family, my son, had to witness some of this, especially in the locker room. I regret all of that from a personal standpoint, yet steadfast remain that I made a tough decision that was the right decision for the WWF fans and the WWF superstars that remain here loyal to us. Interesting stuff here and stuff that I think Brett wouldn't have taken too well. In a way, I agree with Vince. Brett could have done the job on the way out and his finances wouldn't have been altered. Brett was protective of his character and of course he didn't want a job to Sean, but in the end, WCW did nothing with Brett at all, so the hitman was protecting a character that would go on to get tarnished anyway. Brett didn't have a crystal ball, but still, on the grand scheme of things, Vince was right here. Brett wasn't going to lose any money 
money by bowing out of the WWF with a loss. Vince says that there is no difference between Bret fans and WWF fans and he's very wrong here. Bret had one of the most loyal followings in the history of wrestling, especially in Europe. And even though creatively WCW didn't do anything special with Hart, fans still tuned in to see what WCW would do with the Hitman, at least initially. I think it's absolutely ridiculous to claim that the WWF and its talent have the exact same fan base. Vince also saying that Brett's family is dealing with a lot of shit due to Brett's quote tirade. It's a little low and it's a little too personal. It's not really for Vince to say, but yes, I do agree that it must have sucked to have your son witness you getting punched in the face also. Vince is then asked what he would say to Brett at that moment if he had the opportunity. Vince said, Probably what I said to him in the locker room, that is, that he made a mistake that I believe he'll regret from a professional standpoint, and it didn't have to be made that way. I felt I did what I had to do for my company and our fans and our superstars that remain here. I am unwavering in that point of view, and perhaps Brett is unwavering in his point of view. And I don't know if we'll ever get together. I hope we will one day. It's too bad that a 14 year relationship was destroyed because one man member of that relationship forgot that we were in the sports entertainment business. That one member forgot where he came from. We can't pick this one apart really. This is what Vince felt and he had every right to feel that way. He felt he was doing the right thing and Brett felt he was doing the right thing. I actually wish other people would share this perspective when discussing the Montreal Screwjob because that's what it boils down to. Brett did in a way also forget he was in the sports entertainment business though. We hear time and time again that Brett maybe took himself too seriously and I personally think that Brett could have gained a lot more by losing at Survivor Series in terms of his future prospects with the WWF, a company that was about to skyrocket in terms of mainstream popularity. The interview ends with Jim Ross asking if Vince will ever get over the Montreal screw job. Vince answers, I'm over it now. At the same time, Brad has been such a part of the WWF. A part of Brad will always be here in the World Wrestling Federation, and I'm going to remember the good times. I'm going to remember all the things we did with Brad when he performed to his greatest degree possible and tell those wonderful stories. I'm going to remember Brad as the excellence of execution. It's just too damn bad that in the end, Brett really wasn't the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. And he had the opportunity to live up to that in his final match in the WWF, and he failed. And there it is, Brett's famous motto, a timeless phrase in every sense of the word. Brett's claims of being the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be gets denounced by Vince McMahon, owner of the WWF. Vince also says he doesn't know if the two men will ever get back together again, but he hopes they will. And of course, Brett would end up returning to the company in 2010. This whole interview completely turned wrestling fans against Vince McMahon. So Vince's claims of Bret Hart fans and WWF fans being one of the same was completely off the mark. Fans saw past this, and while I do believe that Vince said some things here that he truly meant, I also think that Vince was trying to make Bret look as bad as possible. Vince tried to come out of this looking like the babyface, but it totally backfired. Fans would boo Vince when he made appearances, and chants of you screwed Bret were heard in multiple arenas across America. To his credit, Vince took this and he ran with it. As Stone Cold Steve Austin began rising up the ranks as the WWF's number one guy, Vince would become an on-screen villain, and the Steve Austin vs Mr McMahon rivalry would become one of the most prolific feuds of the Attitude Era. It all started here when Vince tried to tell the world that Brett screwed Brett, and the world simply wouldn't buy it. Thanks for watching and take care.